in this episode. Today, we are meeting up with Karima to learn how to cook a traditional Moroccan dish called tagine. Are you excited? Yeah, let's learn how to make a tagine. I think tagine is on the menu and couscous also, right? Yes. All right, let's do it. You should turn around the camera and show the, your audience what Jamaif now looks like in the morning. Yeah, it's pretty quiet and peaceful, honestly. So very quiet. Our favorite stands are out. The fruit stands? No. Mint stands. Oh, the mint stands. There's nothing today. The early bird catches the early nothing. <laughs> Tagine is not one specific dish, but instead a funnel shaped clay pot used to steam and stew meat and vegetables. Historically, the Berbers used the tagine as a portable oven, allowing them to prepare food at any time while moving around. While the food is being cooked, steam rises into the cone, condenses, and then falls back down into the dish, allowing it to naturally and continuously baste itself. Say what? So we're in the food market. Be careful. There are lots of motorcycles going by. And we are buying some chicken to make some tagine. It's very fresh. So fresh that we had to watch it be butchered right in front of us. I don't think the vegans will like this episode. This chicken is halal, which means it has been slaughtered according to the Islamic way of sacrificing animals for human consumption. Halal means permissible in Arabic and must adhere to these laws. I've never seen chicken meat so fresh. <laughs> Still warm. Next thing on the list is vegetables. It's like the farmer's market of Morocco. We have a no green. Red one. No green, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Pick better, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Flash question for you. What is this? Quince. Now, I didn't know it, but our tour told us. <laughs> I cheated. We picked up some other items like bread and orange blossom water, and then made our way to Karima's Riyadh to cook it all up. So good looking. Take note of how quiet and peaceful this street is, because when we return later, all these big wooden doors will be opened up to display the goods for sale, and the souk will have come to life. So this is the beautiful Riyadh, where we will be doing cookies. And now we're just going to have to make some meat tea. This means, you know what? Yep. You buy it uh, at mm, the market. Yeah. Traditional Moroccan tea starts with a base of loose Chinese green gunpowder tea. And I take one glass of boiled water. I put it also inside the pot for washing. Now add the mint, add sugar. How many you want? For us in Morocco, we do, we add the uh, 20. <laughs> 20 of those? <laughs> yeah. 20? Now, we add the boiled water. I put it over the fire for boiling some minutes, okay? How many minutes? A few minutes. Just, just a few minutes? Boiled, yeah, just, just until it boils. Just boil it, it's ready. Wow. Yeah, now it's ready. And look, I need to mix it Two cups, two glasses, okay? One, two, and it's ready now. And the height that you take while serving the tea is not only impressive, but I'm pretty sure it cools it down too. Is that what it's for, to cool it down? No, no. it's in our culture because uh -huh. I don't, I, I, I lock my grandparents to this, I do it. Ah, okay. It's for the spectacle. Yeah, I think. <laughs> just for the spectacle with the Merci. We actually learn later that the reason they pour it like that is to aerate the tea and to give it a nice foam. But also, pouring the tea from up high in a stream is considered an act of respect towards the guest. The higher you pour the tea, the more important your guest is. Donc, le premier gorgé de thé. De thé de, thé de mouth. Did you pronounce that correctly? Tea à la menthe. Tea. Cheers. Santé. The perfect amount of soup. <laughs> I'm trying to use my French words. 
I see you're grasping for help. He just teach me that phrase for like a good solid minute before I could spit it out correctly, so. Shh, they don't need to know that. And since honesty is the best policy, this tea's really good. Moroccan mint tea is rarely served alone. Many hosts will bring out dates, nuts, cookies, cakes, or other sweets. Snackies. Okay, snackies, sure. And this one tastes like a British cookie, honestly. Before we began to cook, our hands were washed with this traditional Moroccan hand washing set. Wow, she washed my hands like this more often. <laughs> tu es prêt? Je suis prêt. You want your tea? Oui. Merci beaucoup. These are the ingredients for a chicken tagine. Garlic, lemon, chili peppers, olives, preserved lemon, onion, coriander, ginger, salt, pepper, turmeric, saffron for color. Wow, it's finesse. And olive oil. Juj in Arabic. Juj. Telatan. What? Telatan. Telatan. Arbaal. Arbaal. Khamsa bat ulot. Khamsa. Khamsa. Sita. More or lot or lot. I think uh, you, you. Sita. Yeah. One more. More because you are the European spoons, not uh, <laughs> <laughs> spoons. Wow, it looks so good. So we have to rub it in really nicely <laughs> to get the flavor. And then just give it a little good tajin. Cook well. You're failing the French right now. Emily, please. I finished much faster. Why are you taking so long? It's because you started before me. Don't be so cheeky. Next, we are preparing the Moroccan salad, which consists of diced tomatoes, onions, lemons, salt, coriander, and this charred pepper. The green pepper is ready. We put it in the plastic bag after we remove skin. Okay? Qu'est-ce que tu fais, Emily? I'm removing the skin. Once we burnt it, we skinned it. <laughs> You're doing well, I think. I will just show you something in the kitchen. Okay. okay. Can you go with me? Yes. I have burnt hands. <laughs> For cook all, we need max one hour. After we come back, we add the, the olives, green olives, preserved and, lemon skin. Yeah, and the skin of preserved lemon. Goodbye, Tashin. <laughs> Merci. <laughs> I love this. Did you drink half my tea? <laughs> I thought you wouldn't notice. Jonathan, of course I notice. <laughs> you take my water at home and you take my tea in Morocco. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Look at that. Look I think at that you squeezed a little bit of juice out of the top. Don't make fun of me, right? I was going in with another technique and then I changed it mid-way. Now, how do you say peel off an orange in French? Epuler l'orange. That's when you pluck. It's like plucking oh. hair. Epoulon. No. Uh, Puisse. No. Uh, Epoulet. Nope. I already said that one, didn't I? No, yeah, it's. Epoulet. 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 Do I say any words in French that were actually French words? Yeah, you said and a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Et Which is on theme. <laughs> These are the ingredients for my favorite part, which is dessert. What's for dessert? We're gonna have cinnamon oranges. I can't hear you. Cinnamon oranges? Why I can't hear you. <sighs> oranges with cinnamon! <laughs> and I guess mint and pomegranate and honey. And... Eau de fleur. Oh, orange blossom water, right. Call me Cinnamon Bay. Wow. Bien. Sur la grenade aussi Bien sûr, c'est la grenade si vous voulez. Ajoutez les olives. Partout Oui, partout, bien sûr. We finished off the tagine with olives and the rinds of the preserved oui. lemons. C'est tout. Maintenant, on va attendre un petit moment et sera prêt. D'accord We wait a little ah. while and then it will be ready. While the tagine was cooking, we enjoyed some sunshine on the roof. Bonjour, monsieur. That is too bright. I can't see you. My little scavenger found some mount. Mount. What do we see here? Emilia la mount. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, you're completely camouflaged. I can't see you. Emily, where are you? I'm here. Don't worry. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. My hair looks awful right now. I it does not. I go like this. Wow. Just blur my head off. Favorite part? It's the caviar at the tagine. The caviar at the tagine. This bed. The juices. The juices at the bottom. The oil that just soaked up all the spices. Mmm. <laughs> oh, he mm. looks so happy. I'm so good. It's crazy how different the area looks now. It's been at like 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. this morning when everything was closed. Part of me feels bad for not finishing the tagine that we made. Um, I hope that she doesn't think that we didn't like it. Probably well, hungry, we're just, just waiting there. The entire chicken. It's a lot of yeah, meat. exactly. It's a lot of meat. And meat is quite expensive in uh, Morocco, so I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Yep. But to be 100% honest with you, from the moment we were at the butcher and the butcher just slammed the, the head of the chicken off. I mean, I could have described it in a less graphic way, but that's just how it felt. My stomach tightened up. And ever since, I haven't been really hungry. Now, if you want to eat meat, maybe you should be comfortable with seeing it die. In that last clip, you can really get a sense of how chaotic the streets of Marrakesh really feel. To continue our Moroccan culinary experience, we decided to check out Patisserie Amandine. Oh, wow. Which one do you want to try first? All of them. This one's delicious. And he's only allowed to eat half because there's one of each. We each get to try half. That one's so pretty. Can I just eat the top? This one's delicious. <laughs> Are they all delicious? Are they much better than the ones we got in the souk the other day? Yeah, like a hundred times. So if people want to get traditional Moroccan pastries without them being stodgy from the souk and covered in flies, and they pollution. should get them from Cafe Amun... Amandine. Amon... I don't know Amandine. Think Amandine. I think it was... Oh, you're right. Uh-oh. <laughs> Do they all taste the same? Let me start. No. Well, they all taste like orange blossom water. And nuts. Nuts. Some have uh, almonds, mm, sesame, pecan, fennel. Fennel. The, that, that's the flavors I'm. Cinnamon. I'm getting. Not so far. Oh. Formidable. Formidable. You're going a little crazy. Oh, Jonathan. Can I try some? Good. Mm. Is that it? Mm. This one I get oh, half. That Thank really you. Good. No, that's for me. This one, fennel. Biscotti. Ah, sha la 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 la. I can do that. I want to be really good with mint tea. Anyway, we're not going to bore you with a bunch of cookie eating. We're going to go ahead and finish these off. Because Jonathan's going much faster than me and I have to catch <clears> up, <throat> so catch you later for dinner. Come in, come in. I don't want to disturb the peace in here because it is so nice and quiet all the time inside of the Riyadh, which is so peaceful. You can even hear the birds chirping in the morning and the light streaming in through these beautiful stained glass windows, which is one of my favorite parts. Hey, Juliette. Now, I don't normally do tours of hotel rooms, but I love Riyadh Alagancia so much that I thought if you guys are heading to Morocco and you're looking for a place to stay and what a recommendation, I can't recommend this place enough. And then of course the ceiling is so pretty with a Moroccan lamp at night when we're laying in bed, we just stare up at the lamp. It is so beautiful. And romantic, of course. Now, everything in here is so detailed. Like everywhere in Morocco, all of these doors are beautifully handcrafted. Every room is different in this hotel. They all have similar stained glass windows, but they each have their own unique features about them. Okay, that's it for in our room. Now leave us alone, we're on our honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. We ended our day with dinner and a belly dancing show at Concord Arna.
in the next episode.